Hi right, guys, day 17, chapter 6 we're going to do today, which is just the reading, Myths from the Pacific Northwest. It starts on page 52 on your reading book. Okay, I will, let's see, go over, there's only a couple spelling words in this one, so I'll go over a couple of them. First, while you're getting your stuff, the first word is meek. It's got the A-D-J, and it means quiet <laughs> and gentle. So does anyone remember what the A-D-J stands for? An abbreviation? An adjective. And if something's quiet or gentle, then it's actually de describing them. So yes, that would be a descriptive word, describing word. Two recede. That is a V to move back. Okay, the V. So what are they, in the definition it kind of tells you, is that a person, place, or thing? Is it a descriptive, a describing word? Or is it a action word? An action word, so verbs are action words. Number three is vibration. That is a N. That's a continuous fast Shaking movement. Person, place, or thing. A uh, action word or a describing word. It's got the N. So it's a noun, yes. And it's a person, place, or thing. So I'm going to start reading now. Um, I may stop and ask you guys some questions. You guys can think about the answers as I'm going along. Okay. And that'll be what we do today. So get to your reading book, page 52. Myths from the Pacific Northwest. Raven steals the light. Raven is a very important character in the mythology of most Pacific Northwest tribes. He is featured in numerous stories, many of which are creation myths. Creation myths explain how the world began and how people and various animals came into the world. However, in this tale, Raven is not really a creator. He is actually a trickster, meaning that he makes things happen by tricking other characters. The following story explains how light was hidden and then restored. Many years ago, in a house on the banks of the Yakima River, there lived an old man and his grown daughter. You would not have known by looking at his little house, but the old man was very rich. However, he was also very greedy. Every year, many salmon swam past his house. He always caught many more than he needed, and he chased away anyone else who tried to catch him. Go away, he yelled. Those are my fish. These are not your fish, the people told him. The river gave them to us. But the old man ignored them. You'll be sorry if you take my fish again, he warned. When he saw a woman gathering firewood in the forest near his house, the old man yelled, That is my firewood. Go away and find your own. The woman held up the sticks and said, You do not own this wood. The tree gave it to me. The old man only shook his fist and warned, You'll be sorry if you take my firewood again. The old man was so greedy that he would not even share with his own daughter. He would not let her take fish from the river. She was allowed to gather roots and berries to eat, but only if she walked far away from the house so she would not gather any of his foods. When he caught her eating blackberries from a bush near the house, he yelled, Those are my berries! You'll be sorry you took them. But the bush gave them to me, his daughter said in a meek, quiet, nervous voice. This made the old man very angry. He was tired of people stealing from him, but he knew how to stop them once and for all. 
People could not steal his things if he could not see them. However, he was so rich, he could not hide all the things he owned, so he died, decided to hide the light instead. The old man took the sun and moon and all the stars from the sky, and he put them in a box. He held the box in his house and refused to tell anyone where it was. Then the whole world was dark. When people needed firewood, they had to crawl out into the darkness and search the ground with their hands until they found something that felt like wood. When they were hungry, they had to crawl into the river and feel around in the water until a fish swam into their hands. Life without light was very hard, and soon the people were cold and hungry, and a sadness filled their hearts. But Raven heard about the greedy old man who stole the sun and moon and stars, and he came up with a plan to steal them back. Raven followed the old man's daughter when she went out searching for food. She searched in the darkness and found a blackberry bush. The thorns pricked her fingers as she searched for berries. Clever Raven turned himself into a blackberry and she picked them and ate them. Then Raven was in her belly and he became her child. Months later, Raven was born. The old man did not like having a baby in the house. To make matters worse, Raven grew very quickly and soon he was a curious, energetic boy. He asked questions about everything, and he always wanted the old man to tell him stories, sing songs, and play games. The old man did not like to do any of these things, but Raven asked him every day anyway. Grandfather, I am bored. Raven said, Will you play a game with me? No. Will you tell me a story? No. Then what can I do? I am bored. The old man fumbled around in the dark trying to find something for Raven to play with. Raven refused everything he offered. I already played with that. That is boring, Raven said. If only I could see them, maybe I could find something to do. But it is too dark. Then the old man had an idea. He went to his secret hiding place and pulled out the box. He gave the box to Raven and said, Here, play with this. This will keep you busy for a while. Just don't show anybody else. Now leave me alone. Raven opened the box and the light of the sun and moon shone on his face. Then the old man could see that he had been tricked. Grasping the box in his talons, Raven flapped his wings and flew out of the house. He flew and flew way up high into the sky and there he emptied the box and the sun and the moon and stars all returned to their places and the light was restored. So, what might the moral or message be about being greedy and the old man's beliefs about nature? Who was greedy in it? The old man. What did he say about nature? That everything was his. And that nothing else, anyone else could have if it was close to him. Is that true that everything in nature is one person's? No. Second. Is the old man actually successful in keeping this light hidden forever? No, he gets tricked by a boy who is actually the raven, right? Page 56. Thunderbird and Killer Whale. Thunderbird is a mythical creature common in most Pacific Northwest cultures. It is also a common theme on totem poles or ceremonial costumes. In most stories, Thunderbird was a kind and powerful creature who often helped people. The story of Thunderbird and Killer Whale appears in many tribal mythologies. Like many myths, this one was used to explain certain aspects of nature or important events. There are two natural events or phenomena explained in this story. Can you tell what they are? Here we go. One day, Killer Whale arrived in the waters and attacked all the other fish. Killer Whale was hungry and he ate many fish. The fish he did not eat were so scared they swam away to the other waters. Then the people could not find any fish for themselves and they began to starve. Thunderbird was a big mighty bird. His bright colorful feathers were as long as canoe paddles and his talons were like harpoons. When he flapped his great wings the sound of thunder rumbled through the skies. One day Thunderbird was flying along the coast. He looked down and saw that the people were starving. This made Thunderbird sad because he loved the people and did not want to see them suffer. He asked them why they didn't have any fish and the people told him about Killer Whale. This made Thunderbird very angry. 
Thunderbird found Killer Whale and swooped down out of the sky. Thunderbird grabbed Killer Whale with his talons and tried to carry him away. But Killer Whale put up a fight. He wrestled free from Thunderbird's grasp and fell down into the ocean with a great splash. The splash was so big that it shook all the waters and even the land. The waters rose up and covered the land. Trees were ripped from the soil. Houses were shattered and many people died before the ocean waters receded and came back. Thunderbird and Killer Whale fought for many days. At last, Killer Whale knew he could not win, and he swam away. Gradually, the fish returned and the people had food again. Ever since, the people have never forgotten how Thunderbird helped them. According to the story, Thunderbird's wings caused the sound of thunder. This is common in most Thunderbird myths, but this story seems to explain something else. Many researchers believe this story is about a tsunami or a tidal wave that struck the Pacific North Northwest hundreds of years ago. Tsunamis are caused by the earthquakes in the Earth's crust deep beneath the ocean surface. The vibrations from the earthquake create waves, and if the earthquake is strong enough, these waves form a tsunami. Tsunamis are very destructive when they strike land. It is no surprise that the survivors would mark the event as a myth like this. So, that's all the reading today. Tomorrow, we're going to probably reread it and answer the questions. Then, we'll read an excerpt from it on what's Thursday and write a paragraph to summarize this one story. Then, we might make another persuasive essay or have you guys do it at home and you show me. Um, and then there's other questions after. Okay. So, you guys are doing great. Keep up the good work. Tomorrow, like I said, we'll reread that story and answer some questions after. Have a great day, guys.